Hello! This video is going to be doing some myofascial release for our hamstrings and for our calves. And if anybody has done similar work before or has worked with a foam roller before, you probably know that these areas are not the easiest to get into compared to other areas like the back or the quads. So, supplies needed, blocks and tennis balls. As with anything, if you don't have these exact items, that's fine. Just find anything that works similar. So it could be a stack of books, you know, it could be some bent blocks or other boxes, your shoe box can work. Like really anything as long as it gives you some elevation. Um, same thing for the tennis balls. You can use lacrosse balls, massage balls, a can of soup, a rusted potato, you know, as long as it has the rounded, circ more circular shape, all right? Now, I'm gonna show it so that we are doing both legs at the same time. You can only get one of each. That's also totally fine. You can do one at a time. It doesn't matter. I'm just killing two birds with one stone for this case. So, all you have to do is be seated here on the floor and you're going to get the blocks on either side. So we'll start with the calves first. So get them out approximately where your calves will be sitting. That works for me. And you'll get the balls up under here. So if you have watched any of the previous myofascial videos, you know, in this case, we do this slowly. A lot of people when they're rolling out muscles is they go quick, lots of you know rolling back and forth, which isn't wrong. It's just you're not going to be making you know substantial long-term changes to your fascia. Um, to get those long-term changes and to actually like make the change, get the tissue to disentangle, to get the trigger points out, to get it to lengthen and then stay also lengthened and smooth. It needs time. The body needs a lot of time and patience to make changes. So nothing wrong if you've been doing the quick roll it out method, um, but that's just not what we're doing for here today. Okay? So that's all it really is. You get your tennis balls up on your block, your book, whatever it is you're using, and it's that elevation and letting the legs relax over the balls that's going to make the difference just because when we're doing it on the floor like that, you don't have the same weight dropped onto the ball. Because if I sit on the ball on the floor just like this, I have my entire torso weight pushing down, which makes it work, which makes it work very well to get into the glutes. My leg doesn't have that same weight pushing down. So just by getting this extra elevation, we add uh, some more gravity onto it. Now, as ever, the exact spot where you will feel something is gonna be different. It could be different from leg to leg, day to day, from person to person. So I'm just starting off right in the middle of the bulk of the muscles here in the calves. It already feels like there's some tension, a little bit of tenderness more on my left side. So I'm gonna hang out here. You can move around, move up and down, side to side, see where you find areas of sensation, what exactly you will feel, again, is up to your body. It could feel just tight, just pressure, tenderness, there could be aching pain, it could be something very local under where the ball is, it could be referring up to the knee, down to the foot, can go anywhere and then that can change depending on if you move an inch you can completely change what it feels like you don't feel anything yet when you first you put the leg down on the ball that's fine give yourself at least 30 seconds to start letting yourself relax into it think about being heavy and finding the heaviness over the ball and you might start to feel some sensation come up once you let that gravity take place and then if you still don't start moving around, start exploring and being curious. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna find a new spot. There we go. All right, we're on a spicy spot. So 
this is now the part where we hang out, let yourself relax, let yourself be heavy, find that dead weight, you know, wet sandbag, kind of feeling in the muscles. Maybe you can notice some twitchiness. Um, if there's ever any numbness or tingling going into the feet, if it's like super, super mild, like, oh yeah, I notice seeing it a little bit. I, you know, don't panic. You know, a tiny bit of compression on the nerve is not going to cause any damage, especially when I feel a few minutes of hanging out. If it's a more moderate feeling, just move around. Move around, find a new position for the ball to sit on. All right? And breathe and hang out. And your body will tell you when you're done. I find personally for me, that can go one of two ways. Either it's the feeling of, well, whatever sensation I was feeling is gone and it feels like nothing now. Or B, the quality of it is changing and becoming more of a bad pain kind of type of feeling. And if you've done much exploring with your body with exercise and soft tissue work, uh, you may be very familiar with what feels different in your body for the good pain of like, yes, this sucks, but I can feel it's helpful and therapeutic versus the bad, no, I don't like it, make it stop type of pain. So I'm gonna move up again, just for myself. Now, do be mindful as you move your way slowly up to the backs of your knees, the tissue is gonna become thinner. There's going to be a couple large vascular um, veins in an artery coming through the back of your knee. Um, as well as the major nerves are branching off. So do not come right into the back of the knee, okay? You have your major heads of your gastroc right here along the sides. You don't need to go past them, okay? And even as you're getting to the back of the knee, you know, I'd say try rolling around and staying more on the sides rather than directly in the back because you don't want to be compressing any vascular or nerve structures, that will suck. And your body will tell you immediately that it sucks. All right, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna move on. If you feel like your calves still need more, just pause, hang out here, do it in your own time. Um, oh, moving out to the hamstrings. Move these back now. You will need to get yourself elevated up onto the blocks now a bit. Um, similarly, if you're starting at the bottom of the thighs here, trying to come right to the end attachments um, because they just become very tendinous down here, thinner tissue, all of the structures that I just mentioned. You know, try and start at least like two or three inches up from the knee, okay? And then, yeah, any nerve pain, numbness, tingling, same, same, okay? All right, so lift yourselves up. Get yourself placed on your hammies. Now, there is technically three hamstring muscles. You are going to want to play around with having the balls more on the outside or opening and getting them more on the inner muscles closer to inside the legs, which whoop, is a lot more spicy on my side than things. We're gonna hang out here. So if this doesn't work for you because you're not capable of, you know, holding your torso up like this, you can do this sitting in a chair. Um, and you know, even if you can comfortably hold yourself up like I am doing right now, you can still do the chair method. It's basically the same thing, but you sit in a chair, put the ball under your leg, and that's it. Move, move it around, um, you do a bit of, you know, bending and straightening the knee of the chair to get a bit of active release happening, but this is not the only way to move, do a myofascial release for your hamstrings. This is just one method um, and I like it because if you're already doing workouts and stuff on the floor on your yoga mat, it's like you're already here, you might as well just stay here to keep doing your release work, right? 
So this is done good. I'm gonna move on by moving myself up further and grab the edge. Yeah, we have to adjust the balls so they don't fall off. And keep going, find your juicy spots again. For the hamstrings, while the attachments by the knee you'll want to look out for, you can pretty much come right up to the top attachments under the glutes. You may find more, not the overall rule, but more commonly as you get close to the tendon attachments, uh, it can get a little more tender. So be on the lookout for that. It's all falling off. There we go. There you go. I'm right at the top right now. I've got them under the tendon attachments, so almost at the glutes, but not quite. Uh, so the tendon attachments, if you're not familiar, that's kind of where your sit bones are. So if you're sitting on the ground, you usually feel those two bony prominences um, sticking into the floor. That's where you're going for. And same thing as the guests. If you feel like you need more, by all means, feel free to hang out here for as long as you feel is needed for your body. Otherwise, if we're done, like I am, fall off your blocks. You can move everything to the side and just take a moment to bring everything in again. See how your hamstrings feel. If you've been working on any flexibility in the hamstrings and calves, now would be a good time to go into a stretch, see how they feel. So I might bring us to do this together, because why not? Let's see how it feels. So one thing that I'm also going to recommend is if you're going to do any myofascial release for yourself, um, for the muscle that you're working on, do the stretch for it first. Stay in the stretch, cement into your mind, how does this feel right now? How does the muscle feel? You know, how far am I able to go into the stretch? Um, how severe does it feel as well? Not just the quality. Go to your mild fascia release, do it just on one side, like maybe just to your left leg. Come back, do the stretch again for both sides and see what difference do you notice between the side that has had mild fascia release and the side that is untouched. Go back, do your opposite side. Thank God we only got two legs because with how painful it can be sometimes, it's kind of nice not to have to do it more than twice. Um, and then go to your stretches again you know, see what's changed, what feels different. Maybe nothing changed at all. Maybe you need multiple rounds in the life myofascial release before it changes notice. But even that is all information. All right. Thank you for joining me for some myofascial release and hope you can enjoy the rest of my videos as well. If there's any specific types of stretches, yoga moves, different calisthenics, any workouts, anything that you want to see, just let me know and I can try and explain it all for you. Good job.